Every year, thousands of students apply to Ivy League universities, and only about 5% get in. Do you want to be in that 5%? Then stay tuned. Hello, I'm Nathan Greenberg, founder of Ivy League Mentors Prep, and this is the second in a three-part video series on the path to the Ivy League. In case you haven't seen it already, I highly encourage you to tune in to the first video in this series. That video covers what you should be doing in grades K through nine. However, even if you are already in grades 10 or above, it's worth checking out because you can see what you might have missed. However, for those of you who have not yet seen that video, the key point was about building a foundation by immersing yourself in a wide range of academic and extracurricular opportunities. Well, in this video, we're going to cover what you need to be doing to build on that foundation in grades 10 and 11. So in grades 10 and 11, the primary thing that you need to be focusing on is building a level of expertise. Schools don't want to just take somebody who's okay at many things. They're looking for people who are truly exceptional in certain areas. And that's why you need to develop that level of expertise in a few subjects. Now, I say a few because realistically, it's impossible for anybody to be great at everything. So you're going to need to do a little bit of picking and choosing. Luckily, if you follow the steps that I mentioned in the previous video, you should have already exposed yourself to a wide range of academic and extracurricular opportunities. So you should have by now a sense of what you like and what you're good at. And if you like something and you're good at it, that's an indication that this might be something that you want to build on. So now I'm gonna talk about how you can actually do that. Let's start off with academics. Regarding academics, it's important in 10th and 11th grade to take a number of advanced classes if possible. Now, that doesn't mean you need to take 15 AP classes or anything like that. In fact, it's most important to take advanced classes in the subjects of your expertise, the ones that you think you might want to major in in college. Let me give you a few examples. If you think you might be applying to colleges as a pre-med student, well then in that case it makes sense to take a lot of STEM courses like AP Bio or AP Chemistry. On the other hand, if you think you're going to be applying as a business major, well then maybe it makes more sense to take classes like AP Economics. All right, the point is that you need to take the most advanced classes possible in the subjects that you are going to claim to be interested in studying. Now, I will also add, though, that your grades in 10th and 11th grade are exceptionally important. So even in the courses that you're not specializing in as much, it's still important that you get very good grades. Next, we're gonna move on to extracurriculars. Now, the same principle that I was saying for academics applies for extracurriculars. In order to wow an Ivy League university, you need to be exceptional at something. But realistically, nobody can be exceptional at everything. So instead of trying to tackle a little bit of everything, it makes sense to achieve high level or leadership positions in a few key extracurricular activities that are somehow integrated with the rest of your story. Let me give you a few examples to illustrate. Remember that pre-med student I talked about before, the one who is going to major in bio in college? And I said, if you wanna do that, you need to take AP Bio and AP Chemistry. Well, it would also help to have some extracurricular activities in that area. What does that mean? Well, maybe you could intern at a local hospital, or maybe you could do a research project involving biology in some way. Conversely, let's imagine that you're that business major that I talked about before. Well, first, as I said, you should be taking AP Economics, but in addition, why not join the entrepreneurship club at your school or make your own startup company? These kind of experiences would show that you're making connections between your academic life and your extracurricular life, that you're someone with direction and purpose. Now hold up for just a sec. There is one point that I'd like to address right here. I bet some of you are watching this and you're thinking, my school doesn't have an AP Econ class. My school doesn't have an entrepreneurship club. What am I supposed to do? Here's the good news. These schools care a lot less about what specifically you've done than on generally seeing that you've made the most of the opportunities available to you. 
So if you're somebody that doesn't have as many opportunities available, they will understand if you haven't done those things. That said, there's also a lot that you can do in terms of making your own opportunities. So getting back to that initial question, my school doesn't have an AP Econ class. Well, okay, you should still be taking all of the most advanced classes at your school. And secondly, if they don't offer AP Econ, try studying for it yourself. There are lots of free practice resources available online. Get a practice book, take the exam yourself. That would be a wonderful way to show commitment and passion. Similarly, if your school doesn't have an entrepreneurship club, make one. In fact, even if your school does have a lot of clubs, I highly encourage you to make your own club. Why? Well, think about this. If you make your own club, this not only shows your interest in that subject, it also shows that you are a self-starter, the kind of person that makes your own opportunities. And that reflects really well on you once you get to the college application process. It's also not that hard. I mean, your club doesn't actually need to do a lot. Most schools have a pretty simple process for making a club, but if they don't, you don't even need it to be an official school club. Get a few of your friends together, make a website, and meet once a week and talk about the subject. Even if your club realistically isn't doing a whole lot, the fact that you've made it can speak volumes about your own ability and your passion for the subject. Now that we've gotten those points out of the way, there's just a few last things I'd like you to consider for what you should be doing in 10th and 11th grade. First, as I mentioned before, grades during this period are extremely important, so you want to focus on getting the best GPA possible. Next, this is the best chance to get a lot of your standardized testing out of the way. Now, Just because many schools have eliminated the SAT requirement doesn't mean you shouldn't take it. In fact, if you can do well on the SAT, this is a great way to distinguish yourselves from other applicants. So, I recommend taking the SAT in 10th or 11th grade. Now in terms of maximizing your score on the SAT, one of the best methods is to get private help. However, realistically, I understand that not everybody has the means to do that. That's why on my website, Ivy League Mentors Prep, there's a link in the description, I've posted a number of free resources that can help you boost your score. There's also other videos where I go into that topic in more depth. Anyways, moving on, I would like to say one last point, which is that summers matter too. So don't think, just because it's the summer, I can do whatever I want, I can goof off. Also, don't think I can spend my whole summer in an SAT program and do nothing else. All right, the summer is a great chance to develop some of those extracurricular activities we've seen before by doing things like getting an internship or a part-time job, preferably in an area of interest for you. Anyways, that covers everything that you should be doing in 10th and 11th grade if you want to maximize your chances of getting into the Ivy League. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please click like and subscribe to the channel. In addition, I would encourage you again to check out my website, Ivy League Mentors Prep, where there are a lot of free resources that can help you maximize your chance of getting into the Ivy League. Finally, stay tuned for the next video where we discuss what you need to be doing in your final senior year, the home stretch. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>